And our biggest deficit being those poor reading skills. What percentage of people in juvenile justice have reading problems? What do you think? It's 80%. What percentage of high school dropouts have reading problems? It's 80% again. And it probably varies some by area to area. What percentage of people in prison already incarcerated have reading problems or literacy problems? Again, it's at least 80%. Okay. We've set these people on a trajectory of difficulty and more likely failure by not fixing these skills as soon as possible. Because in this society today, well, you really better be able to read and deal with language because we're a very language-rich society. So by definition, dyslexia means troubled words. It's genetic. It's lifelong. Our treatments are highly successful, but they're not going to change your genetic structure. Okay? It may rewire the brain, but it doesn't actually change the genes. Sometimes your reading comprehension is actually better than word reading, and you may have co-occurring challenges. 50 to 70% of people who have dyslexia will also have ADHD. Okay? There may be behavior problems because of the frustration you've experienced. There may be sensory motor problems, which means many of these kids, when they actually are given a pencil to write, they don't use a tripod grip. Okay? They grip it like this, or they grip it like this, or some of them do some really unusual things like they have this kind of grip like this, and they write like this. What they're doing is they're turning writing into a gross motor act, they're moving the whole arm, this is a fine motor act. Okay? That wiring that I showed you that was inefficient in the brain, that was that language cortex, what I forgot to point out is right above that, that's your fine motor skill cortex. It's fine motor skill for the fingers, and guess what other area? you think leads to why they have decreased sense awareness here, that tachykinesthetic feeling is not as strong, because that's an area of the brain that was shown to have less efficient wiring. When that happens, it's more hard, it's more difficult to actually help improve their skills. What dyslexia is not, sorry, let's skip ahead, not a visual problem. They don't see words backwards. You'll never see a dyslexic person look at the word the and say, eh, it <laughs> doesn't happen. Okay? That was a myth. It's still being perpetuated today. It's completely unfounded by science. Not due to lack of intelligence. In my online company where we do online tutoring all across the United States, one of my current clients, guess what his profession is? He's a heart surgeon. Guess what he can't do? He can't spell or sound out words. And he made it through med school. Not just med school. He's a literal heart surgeon. And what happened is his kids started catching his reading errors. And he was embarrassed by that. He's like, I'm a heart surgeon. I should be able to read better than my you know, five and six year olds. And so he sought treatment, sought help. This is not the first physician I've treated. In 30 years, trust me, we've treated a lot of surgeons, heart surgeons, neurosurgeons, hand trauma surgeons, people who have more struggles. Guess what? You'll see more dyslexia in surgeons than you will in pediatricians. Why is that? To be a pediatrician, what might you better be able to do? You bet. Talk. What are surgeons not known for? They're not great in talking skills or bedside, bedside manner. The nurses do that. But they're more skilled at the fine motor skills. They're going to come and do the surgery, but they've chosen a profession that goes to their strengths, not their weaknesses. Okay? You'll see more dyslexia in architects and engineers. How come? Those are visual spatial activities. Not as much language as well. Some dyslexics have better visual spatial skills, like what Zach was talking about. When we do large scale studies, not all of them. Many of them are just as impaired in their visual spatial skills are, as they are in their language skills. The only way we know is when we test them. Once we test them, we know how to treat both those skills, make them stronger, that helps us figure out what to do about it. 